The broadcast is... Okay, hello everyone. Sorry for the delay there. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Wednesday, May 13th. We did just get the release for retail sales in the United States, weaker than expected across the board. Advanced retail sales for the month of April coming in at flat 0.0%. We were looking for a 0.2%. Do note that we did see upward revisions across the board essentially uh, for the last print. So from 0.9 came into 1.9, from 0.4 on month on month. Uh, X auto into 0 0.7. So it's going to be interesting to see the reaction. We are seeing some further dollar weakness on the move. We're going to go over some of the setups that we've had on the intraday chart um, page. Here's what the dollar index looks like so far to start off the session. Remember, we've been watching 11,737. We didn't close below it yesterday, but here's the secondary push. Momentum looks pretty good. Near term support, 11,664. Good to be with you guys this morning. Terrence, JD, Steven. Uh, I am aware that there's a little issue on the site right now, guys, so we're a little bit light on the room. Um, the tech guys are on it. Looks like I sent out a tweet on uh, MB4X, so <laughs> the site might have gotten a little swamped. But uh, if you're having any issues, that should be corrected within the next couple of minutes here. Um, JD with a question saying, good morning. Some housekeeping question. Do you rewrite all the levels on each time frame on market scope slash FXCM charts, or is there an easier way? Uh, sorry for the unrelated question. No, no worries, JD. So the the uh, the charts, um, there's a daily chart and then there's the intraday chart, JD. So on those, yes, yeah, sometimes I do need to mimic the same level, but it's just those two charts. Um, when you're looking at the scale chart on the page here, that chart is actually um, just the zoomed out 30 minutes. So you can get a broader time frame for where we are uh, as opposed to the structure of the trade. So JD, I hope that offers some clarity on that. Okay, and it looks like we're still uh, experiencing some issues here. So um, first things first, the dollar index. He says, good to go, right on. Um, any questions on where we are on this? Again, remember the broader downside focus now remains in view still below this trend line resistance. Basically yesterday's high, we can drop that bearish invalidation level from the weekly opening range high to yesterday's high at this point. And again, the near term support doesn't really come in until about that 1618 off the high and that brings into 11,664 or so. Uh, beyond that, on a downside break, if we do get some more follow through, looking at this trend line confluence, which comes in right along line with that swing low from January, basically looking just below 11,600, 11,590. So again, adding some clarity, although we can't trade this on state side, adding some clarity here with a nice uh, move in the index. Let's jump into the dollar crosses. Um, we have been involved in the Aussie and the Euro Yen. Uh, the euro dollar also looks very interesting at these levels as well, but we'll go in order. So here's what the Aussie dollar looks like. Um, we've made an opening range break at this point of the month, and this changes things for us, guys. So if you, you checked yesterday's uh, intraday charts, you know we were looking for um, some short side exposure here for the Aussie. If we were to max out right into that 80.22 region, it was a major critical area of resistance. If you look in the daily chart, we went over this yesterday. Whoops. Okay, the median line that extends off that October highs comes right into this region. You have the opening range high for the month, which you set right here on the 6th. You had the high day reversal close, which came in at 80.09. Okay, and that all was right in the 618 retracement off of the yearly high. This was a big, big region. Okay, and based on how we close today, it really has larger implications. We pushed through again 60 on. Uh, the momentum signature here on a break above uh, the opening range high, something like that. Um, it's going to change. It's going to change the momentum profile. OK, and you've seen that the momentum support trigger that we've been watching for the last couple of months. Obviously, had that little dribble there. Really clean bounce here. So uh, Stefan says finally in was having some issues. Yes, yeah, Stefan, I apologize about that. Anyone who's filtering into the room. Do apologize about that technical glitch we had earlier. Uh, all has been resolved on this end. Yeah, just got the okay from IT. Sorry again about that, guys. Uh, Eileen, great to see you. GS, um, welcome aboard. All right, so this is what the daily chart looks like. Here's what the scalp looked like, okay? And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. I actually did take a short on this. We took um, a short on a trigger yesterday in a five-minute chart. 
Um, it actually did come almost close to the ATR. I think we were about 22 pips. The limit was at 28. Uh, it reversed after a, a push through the Asia opening low. I brought the stop to break even, and it, we got broken out on even on the, on the rally here. It's not always your favorite scenario. Uh, it can be frustrating. Yesterday, we actually also had a – I'll go over that in a moment. But here's what the Aussie looked like. Okay, so we had a nice trigger break here in momentum, put us short last night. Here's what the trigger looked like. Okay, this was right after the data out of Australia. So last night's Australia data print, uh, weaker than expected on wage growth. You know, it's one of the weakest wage growth stories that we've seen out of Australia. Here's what the print looked like um, last night. Okay, so we were looking for a drop from 2.5, which is already a record low. Uh, down to 2.4. It actually came in at 2.3. Okay, it didn't wasn't really able to charge much of a decline though, and this is why trading the news is not something that we want to use to ascertain bias, right? It's just a time that we want to be in the market. So um, the the short was was jumped in again. We didn't book profit, but on the rebound here, momentum holding 40 was a tell, and this just goes to build on the, a lot of the discussions that we had yesterday in the room, guys, with regards to using momentum just as a gauge of what the broader story is doing, the underlying movement in price. And when you see a trade like this where the, the drop and the break, here's the Asia open, right? So this was a constitute of an Asia opening range break too. That was more validation, right? Uh, in any event, once you see this drop right here and a reversal pull like this with momentum holding 40, that's when we brought the stops down at break even uh, and it eventually got tagged on the break even for this rally. Good thing can be frustrating, but I'd rather take something like this than be sitting in a losing trade on the rally. So at this point, what are we doing, Mike? You got stopped out. Are you still looking lower? Listen, we're coming into a major area of resistance again just now, and that's 80, 75, 80, 80. Um, this is basically just the highs that you made for the month of March, or what was that, April? And not only that, you have the closed lows here for the January trade session at 80, what was it? Right around 8082. 80, All right. So still has some more upside. Wouldn't be necessarily looking to short it. Uh, would still be looking to buy pullbacks while above 8022. So the same level that was our bearish invalidation now will be our bullish invalidation. Um, so we'll take a little bit more of a sidestep here from trying to short the Aussie. Also, keeping in mind that the momentum signature is in overbought territory and intraday. This is never a time where you want to start to short. Okay. In fact, it's the break below. 70 like this that would be a trigger for near-term short exposure against the highs so we'll see uh actually what was it it was euro yen that gave us a trigger last yesterday with a break below 70 and that worked pretty well so we'll see if uh it turns over in u.s trade but you don't want to fight a breakout like this okay from an objective standpoint you've taken out the monthly opening range you're back above that median line which has been so critical over the last couple of months um it's just too strong for us to try to fade at this point. And if you look at relative performance, guys, here's what the uh, dollar looks like against all its major counterparts today. You can see that the Kiwi and the Aussie are actually the strongest on the session. 1.55 on the Kiwi, 1.33 on the Aussie, and the dollar is just weaker against every single major counterpart. So not necessarily a time we're going to want to try to fight that at this point. Questions on the Aussie setup. Um, there were a couple of positions we took on the Kiwi yesterday. Unfortunately, the, the platform resets, so I can't actually show you the, the, the entries here, but uh, we will look at the Kiwi dollar. All right. Uh, Rosamine says, hello, Michael. If my, if my question is irrelevant, ATR for the index, thank you. Yeah, I don't really look at it too um, too much on the dollar index just because of the value of that, 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 that it's actually quoted in. Um, and also, I don't actually scalp it per se because, again, I'm actually trading stateside, so I don't have access to trading this instrument right here, Rosamond. Um, the ATR is uh, 71 pips. So if you are scalping this, you know, it's pretty tight as far as a, a, daily, a daily ATR type of play. Um, Eileen says, during these runs, any place to just jump in or no stop? I think you know the answer to that, Eileen, right? 
guys, no matter what's going on in the market, and this is something that comes with time, uh, no matter what's going on in the market, you can't let that alter your attitude, your behavior when you're trading, irrespective of what you think is going on. If the market's popping off and there's a huge breakout, you can try to jump in, guys, and you can try to catch a move, but that's not trading, right? That's that's chasing. Um, so, Eileen, I, <laughs> I think, you, yeah, you got it. Uh, I would... I'm just as tempted sometimes as you guys when we see these breakouts and we see these major major pushes to just just jump in. But you know this is what separates the retail novice trader from you know someone who's been a little bit more seasoned and doing this for a while is being able to control that urge. Oh, you know the breakout's happening. I just want to jump in. Having said that, if you're quick enough, yeah, guys, you can always scalp 15 pips, 30 pips on a breakout run. It's just you need to be quick with those stops and that market reverses. Um, you really can't be willing to take a loss. I mean, as soon as you know things start to uh, show you that the momentum is turning over, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be time to pull the trigger. So for me, I, I'm not interested in trading that way. I mean, if if the market isn't coming into a level that I'm looking at, if I'm not poised and I have a proper stop on the trade, um, you know, we're just we're just chasing. So we just made it through the other target, 74, 78, 74, 80. Looks like this thing has some legs on the Kiwi dollar. Another trade um, that if we make the rally here through 75.30 may have larger implications. Now you're making an outside uh, candle and the entire daily range yesterday has been covered already. Just an overnight trade. This is before the uh, European markets even came online, guys. We had already completed an outside day for yesterday's range. Momentum, 40 hold, trigger break. You might have some more upside here before this thing turns over. All right. It's been a big decline. It's been a big decline. I uh, personally didn't expect that the, the rally would go through this region. Remember, this is the bearish invalidation level we highlighted earlier in the week. But we're here. So at this point, you want to be very, very cautious about trying to short this. Again, same thing as the Aussie setup. Uh, but I would be looking to buy pullbacks while above near term. 7550. Why 7550 so big, by the way? Let me just uh, tell you guys some cool tidbits. A, it was the 618 retracement of the range for the week. Basic, okay? B, you had the median line off the high. Okay, right here. All right, basic. Take it to the daily chart. More interesting. 7454 is actually the exact 2012 stretch low. We've made some, we've, we've broken some levels here, guys. Um, if I can scroll back long enough, there's the 2012 stretch lows. Okay, so it's 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 a big region. It's a big region. We just made it through, and if we hold above 7450, um, that's going to be near term our bullish invalidation level at this point. And again, near term targets on the upside. You're essentially looking for the weekly high, 7520, 7530 is going to be a 50 percent of the decline from last month's high. So what's the game plan from here? Um, well, if we hold above 70, I'd be looking for a pullback in U.S. Um, to give us some sort of long exposure. If you get the pullback in 75.5 and you get a trigger down here, um, it might be a nice a nice entry. More likely, the same level that we highlighted on yesterday's report, okay, is going to be the same level we we that would invalidate the long side. So if we get a pullback here, we get a trigger somewhere in this range or somewhere into 75.80 on the long side. We'd still like to play the longs, but at this point, it's too uh, it's too sharp of a rally to try jump in. Here's what the intraday looks like, guys. Right, even the five minute way in overbought condition here. Don't really have much triggers on the long side. You're gonna have to wait it out. You're gonna have to wait it out. Roseman says, Michael, I'm short the dollar index from eleven thousand seven thirty one. Any guidance, please? Yeah, sure, no problem. We can take a quick back look at the uh, at the index. So. Um, I think you might have just missed this, Roseman, but near-term support, I'd be looking for 11,664. It's a 1618 extension from the highs. Um, and it's also a little bit very close to that swing low that you made back on the 22nd, which was the day that we went through the opening range for January. All of these factors I like to look at. So um, you're coming into some near-term support here. Look for 670, 664, um, Roseman. That's where I'd be looking for support. Are you short from 11,732? Okay, let me just jump into a uh, two-hour chart here and see if I can get you some near-term levels on that as well. 
as always, guys, if you have any questions or trade setups that you're in, feel free to throw them on the message board. Be more than happy to review them for you. Take a quick technical look at it. I'm sure there's someone else in the room who's trading that same pair as well. Yeah, and you're in over over uh, oversold territory. This is great. So here's the thing, you know, watch the momentum signatures on the shorter time frames. As long as you hold in oversold territory, I wouldn't really be concerned. I would be looking to target that 11,664 um, near term. Now, I kind of don't want to tell you to put your stops at break even yet, but if you do break back above 11,000, same exact level, right? 733, 735. Um, you know, you want to be cautious of uh, of the dollar short. That being said, I think you're on target here. Hope that helps, Roseman. Quick near-term prospect there on the dollar index. Um, so, moving right along. I do want to get to as many questions as I can in as many of your setups as possible. Um, Roseman, you're more than welcome. Andrew says, thoughts on sterling odds. Okay, let me just get through the euro real quick, and we'll jump into sterling odds. Here's what the euro looks like from last night. And again, another trade that um, doesn't necessarily didn't necessarily go as planned, but nonetheless, the levels have continued to play out, uh, or the price actions continue to play out through our levels nicely. So yesterday's piece, uh, we were looking for this rebound off of 112.76. So if you remember 112.76, 112.80 was the bearish invalidation level um, on the rally yesterday. As we came into this region, we came off. We had a nice momentum trigger with that break below 70 in and of itself. And we sat at 112.05, 112.08, which is basically the opening range high initially for the week. Right. So as we came into this yesterday, we noted, you know, you could get a bounce off this region, but we're looking for short triggers. The only short trigger that gave out was this, and it looked like it gave out at 4 in the morning. Obviously, I wasn't awake to trade this, guys, but you might have gotten faked out on that drop. If you did, I probably would have been there right with you. Um, you had to be mindful of the fact that you were getting GDP numbers out of um, the Eurozone. And here's what those numbers look like. Okay, Right in line with expectations at 0.4% quarter on quarter or 1%. So you didn't get an additional downside push on that. There were a lot of expectations that it was going to miss so that you could see, um, you know, the deviation off that 1.1 percentage that we were expecting on the quarter and quarter. You didn't see it. So we didn't really get much play on that. Um, and then here we are rocketing through on weaker U.S. data, which is what's charging this advance here. So now that we've cleared 112.76, same game plan as the Aussie guys. You reverse your course. Momentum signature remains constructive. Since the start of the week, pull back into 40, pull back into 40, 70 break, turn ahead of 40, turn ahead of 40. Okay, keep looking higher. Near term resistance, look for 113.23. It's a soft target. And then you really want to focus on the median line structures that we've been within, guys. And again, at the end of the day, despite what we thought was going to happen, what the game plan was, the thing is holding this formation with such accuracy that we really could, should can just continue um, to follow this glide path for the market. All right, near term resistance, like I said, thirteen thirty two, we're about to hit, or thirteen twenty three, we're about to run into that right now. Key resistance one thirteen ninety into one fourteen oh seven. In fact, let's see if there's any near-term structure to the advance right off this low. Okay, I actually could work with either one of these. Okay, and what we're doing is we're trying to see which one of these slopes gives us the most guidance in price? So you're looking for pivots. You're looking for reversals. This one could be in play. A little too sharp for my uh, for my liking. If you take it to the stretch low from earlier in the week, you can see support, resistance, break. Puts the target a little bit higher. Right around 113.46 is another level you'd want to look at in your term.
does euro dollar rally affect the euro yen trade too? Sure, right? So you got to make sure that you're keeping into into focus, Raj, what the mover is of the pair, right? A lot of the times there'll be one singular currency that's actually on the move that's pressing the pair. So if we look at euro yen, let's take a quick segue here. Any questions on euro, guys, just feel free to throw it out. Um, you stay constructive near term about above 1276. But let's take it, uh, a, a look at euro yen. So this was actually a piece I put on uh, Daily FX yesterday. Guys, all the reports that are on Daily FX will always be featured right here. So anytime you're going through this or you're kind of wondering what um, if there are any other setups that have been published, there's uh, always going to be that link there. Uh, I'm here's let me take a step back here's what the intraday chart looked like yesterday for euro yen or the daily rather here what it looked like first so the operative trade here was the press against 135.13 a little bit higher than 135 handle and that's um, not necessarily a major major key threshold it's basically just a 38.2 here but it's also the initial stab that we made at the opening range high for may um, and the weekly opening range high that we set yesterday and the response that we got off that level was pretty good. So we've been favoring the short side below this region. Here's what the scalp looks like on the intraday. Okay, so the premise again is that we're in this formation. It looks like we're trying to make a breakthrough right now. The 618 at 34.18, <clears throat> excuse me, was the target on the shorts. And this is another one, guys, that played out really well for us yesterday. I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you what happened because it was pretty stupid in that uh, I actually exited the position um, on accident, believe it or not, whether uh, someone this deep in the game as many years as I have should be doing that. But here's what Euro Yen looked like on the five minutes. So uh, obviously the entries from yesterday didn't show here, but there was a really clear cut trigger uh, as he came into the highs. He got some divergence in momentum. He got a nice trigger break uh, with this move below 60. We took the short. I'm sorry, it was more on this rally here against the highs on the last push uh, and the 60 hold in momentum. OK, so yesterday into the U.S. Open, we came right into 60. Um, you know, that held as resistance. You got a downside break of the U.S. opening range and the stop was against this high. So on the initial stretch for 37 pips, we did book a quarter of the trade. The rest of the trade was being was looked to being booked at this region here, 113, 134. 134.20, excuse me. Um, and again, you know, it kind of it got, I was, I'm not even sure what I was doing. I was looking to take off a quarter of the trade and I just didn't see that the lottage was full amount. Long story short, it took us all out. I jumped right back in. Uh, obviously, that's not something I want to encourage you guys to really do, but I had a lot of conviction on this trade. Uh, and when you have, when you do something like that, guys, where you know you're not supposed to be doing it, uh, you know, as soon as the market starts to move through the next level, I just brought the stop down and break even. And again, another frustrating break even stop here. Uh, nonetheless, where are we from now? At this point, we're trying to test the upper median line parallel again. Remember, this is still the bearish invalidation. So even if euro does press higher, guys, uh, I'm cautious on trying to do anything on the long side of euro yen below this region. OK, this is the opening range high for the week. This is the pivot that reversed the course of the trade yesterday in U.S. trade. And, um, you know, that's what's going to invalidate the short bias. Keep in mind the momentum signature also supporting what we're seeing in price. It's a really good example this week, guys, for the discussion we had yesterday um, as far as, you know, being able to use the momentum signature to sort of ascertain the broader trade. Uh, if you're in the swing side of trades, again, you know, that's that stop is, is not going to change. So that's still in play. But near term, I'd be watching this rally here as we get into 135. Adrius, does that make sense? Let me know if you have any questions here on Euro Yen. I feel or think now that the Euro Yen is ready to drop significantly. And again, uh, Mark, I mean, for me, I mean, I'm with you, man. We had a, we have a trigger right here on the daily. I do think you possibly get a pullback into the median line into 132.60. You remember, um, I still think the setup is fine, but from a scalping standpoint, we need to adjust to what near-term price action is doing. Heading into the U.S. session. If we come back into this region, you get a compelling short trigger in momentum. There's nothing wrong with trying to press a stop against the highs. Um, but not at 8.55 here right ahead of the uh, the open. Does that make sense? Adrian says, I'm good, thanks. Uh, Mark saying from a swing standpoint, not a scalp. Yeah, 
yeah, uh, nothing's changed from that standpoint, right? We're still within the same exact range. Let's bring up the five minute chart real quick and see what there is as far as the momentum is concerned. Okay, didn't quite test the Tokyo highs. And there really wasn't any divergence into the lows either. See if we can get that stretch as close as we can to 35, guys. I actually might be interested in trying to fade this move later on in the session here. Uh, we'll watch this one. I'm going to push that one on the side there so I can keep an eye on it. Again, I'm not one who's going to always be, again, uh, really advocating trying to fade these major stretches. But based on where we are in price, and remember, it's all about the risk to reward. If we can get within that 37 pip as tighter as we can get, it's always going to be in our best interest. Those are the triggers we'll be working with heading to the U.S. session. All right. So that is the euro yen um, from yesterday's scalp report on daily effects. And we covered euro, kiwi, and Aussie. All right. So let's jump into your questions, guys. We made good time here in the morning. Um, you know, we've gone through a lot of the invalidation levels. So Use some caution on trying to get any any type of major long dollar exposure and keep your eyes on that dollar index. Again, see if we can get that drop deeper into 11,670, 11,664. All right, so I see a question here from Raj. Wants to take a look at Sterling Yen. You know what? I was actually looking at this last night. Um, it's coming into a very interesting level. So remember we talked about the 88.6s. Here's an 88.6 on the British pound that caught uh, almost the highs. We overshot it by a little bit, but at the 88 handle, 8808 uh, declined from the highs in December uh, on a closed basis, at least making some uh, some progress here. For the pound, there's a couple of things I want to I want to just point out. A, um, the peak here into momentum is something that's been indicative for the British pound versus the yen for a couple of months now. You can see we happened here in, in November, again in December. And here we are again, not quite pushing through 70 to give you the validation on a breakout, but both of these uh, essentially charging just near-term corrective action, just near-term corrective action. Obviously, this one was a little bit more of a magnitude because that was the high, but you see what I'm saying. So we're at a resistance level near-term. Wouldn't be surprised to get a little bit of a kickback here, but based on what we're seeing in the pound, I mean, guys, that's, you know, it's... A simple breakout. You hit, you hit resistance earlier today, gives a little bit of a kickback, but this is a simple breakout as it, you know, as, as clear as it gets. So I'm hard pressed to try to fade it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Raj, here's what the pound looks like on the 30 minute. It's interesting because this actual median line, which dates all the way back to the lows that you made uh, for April, actually came right back in play again, even though we came completely out of it. See that? Little corrective stance right through. Once that broke through, these median lines back in play. And there's that 88.6 at 188.08. So at this point, what are we looking at? You've made some divergence into the highs, okay? Higher high, higher high, lower high, lower high. We're sitting at 40. For me, the tell is going to be right here, guys. If you break into a new low and momentum finally sinks sub 40, that's the first 40 break you've seen from overbought condition since right here. And that 40 break was just the beginning of the correction, which lasted a whole, what, five days, almost an entire week. Again, shallow though, right? Real shallow. So the question becomes for you and for scalpers like me, do we want to even participate in something like this or do we want to use this to get back on the long side of the trade? There's two ways to play it. On the near-term approach, absolutely. If you do see a downside break below 87, you see that break in momentum, there's nothing wrong with, uh, as long as you have proper risk to reward against the session highs, of trying to play that drop into 86.34. Basically, you're looking for the lower median line parallel again. 
healthy range, 43 pips daily ATR looks pretty good. Also on this stretch, once you make this, this break, once you finally make a decent break uh, of support, just tag on a quick retracement and see if there's any confluence with any of the levels that we've been looking at already. Okay, so 236 comes in at 86. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily stress that. Sorry about the little bit of a delay here, guys. 236. Okay. So for our purposes, what we need right now, I would be looking at these levels. Watch that near-term support. This is actually an old uh, 2618 off the low. I wouldn't really stress that too much, but basically you're looking at the lows that we made so far for the U.S. opening range. That's what I'd be watching. Um, and that 40 break in momentum, that's going to be critical. Let's see what the five-minute chart looks like. Yeah, not much by the way of triggers here either. Sterling crosses. The Sterling crosses. I do want to also take a look at whoops. Uh, Sterling CAD. Something that David Song has been looking at actually. Um, here's what that trade looks like on the daily. Another one that's coming into resistance, the 50% retracement from the decline off the yearly highs. Um, and more importantly than that. That median line resistance right off the lows, former support, nice pivot in price on both sides. That came almost exactly to the pip on this stretch here yesterday. Momentum here is different from the momentum that we've seen in the other Sterling crosses, right? Because you never got that 40 hold. You never got those real strong bounces. Um, and this is turning ahead of 60, actually, on a former support trigger. Now turned resistance. So. I think you look at this one as well to give you a little bit more of a tell on whether the pound itself is going to give us a little bit more of a kickback. Uh, but that being said, for the pound yen, here's the, oh, this is uh, dollar yen. For the pound yen, I'd still be looking for that momentum signature and see if you can get that pull back into the R1, somewhere into that range where we looked at on the intraday chart uh, to get back on the long side. Wouldn't necessarily be looking to, to fade this here just yet. Watch that momentum breakdown. Another question on Sterling Oz. Let's go through all the Sterling crosses. Why not? Here's what the Sterling Oz looks like on the daily. Much more stronger reversal. Obviously, this is going to be propagated by the strength that you're seeing in Aussie. Uh, Sterling Key actually doing the same similar similar type of play. I wouldn't touch this at all here specifically because of the divergence you're seeing price action against the two. Um, and now that we're breaking back below this, if we close back below that operative trend line that we that we breached yesterday, remember this was the sort of key target that we would have wanted to short at. We never really made it that high. Um, and if we break back below and close back below this, guys, that invalidates the long side of the trade near term. And that also Shows us a clear 60, again, 60 bounce in momentum. It means, doesn't necessarily mean the trade is going to just completely break apart, guys, but it means that the breakout is not here yet. You know, we're, we're still broadly holding the same range from March. This is the March range. The last two months, all we've done is sit in that initial range. So, let's see what the intraday looks like for this. This constitute a, a break of the weekly opening range low. So objectively, you look lower below 9440. Let's just get a quick zoom out here. Snap some of these trend lines and make sure we're looking at the right stuff.
All right. Sorry about that. Here we go. So again, a quick look at the momentum signature here. Higher high from Friday into Monday, lower high in momentum. You're getting some divergence. Um, first 40 break of the week after 60 hold in momentum keeps the focus to the downside. You're below the weekly opening range low. Now, again, this is not when you want to short. You want to, you want to wait till you get a little bit of a rebound here. Try to see if you can get a decent recovery. Then look to trade that against the opening range high for Europe or the opening range high rather for the U.S., which at this point is bring the trade sessions indicator up. By the way, guys, you can go to fxcmapps.com to get this indicator. <clears throat> Excuse me, the trade session indicator. All it does will highlight the highs and lows for each session. Sometimes can make it easier to to locate the uh, the opening ranges. Okay, so right around 194.60. If we open the range for US, and we kind of hold that. That would be where your stop would be on a, on a trigger to the downside. Remember, this is an oversold territory. As long as it stays there, the market has the propensity to continue lower, and that can stay there for hours, weeks, months, okay? And as long as you're in that condition, the market has the propensity to push higher. Or excuse me, if you're above 70, below 30 will be the market has the propensity to push lower. Awesome. And the 50% retracement comes in at the weekly opening range low. Nice levels here. Does that help? I hope that offers some clarity on that one, Andrew, for Sterling Oz near term. Again, you're playing with, a, with pairs here, guys, that have massive ranges. I really want to make sure I'm pressing that on you. So a quarter of the daily TRT here is actually yielding about 56 pips. If we go to Sterling Key, I'm sure that's even more crazy. Here's what the pound looks like. Uh, versus the Kiwi dollar, that's giving you 67 pips on a quarterly ATR. Very, very similar setup. But just be mindful, be mindful of the of the of the of the volatility that you're seeing, uh, so you can kind of gauge what your what your scalp tri um, targets. Excuse me, I've had a loss of words today. Um, as far as how big your scalp should be. Steven says, Mike, if you see a trigger, but the session high or low is too far away to set the stop for a risk reward, would you consider placing your stop above the previous swing high? Good question, Steven. And something like that, man, is on a case to case basis. Okay. Typically on average, I wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Because, because, you know, what's a swing high, Steven? Right, in intraday price action, we don't really want to stress those. If you're talking about a monthly swing high or a weekly swing high, that's something different. But an, on an intraday session, you know, a swing high, it's it's hard to justify putting a stop against it because we can easily go back and test that high, which might be simple resistance. And all that's going to happen is the trade's going to come back, trigger your stop, and then continue. So on average, I wouldn't say that, Stephen. If you're trading during a time where there's real, real strong volatility and conviction. Let's say, um, let's see if I can find an example. Let's say on a trade that's giving you a reaction to an economic data print, right? Let's say we got the NFP came out and it was really weak for the dollar. Euro starts to surge high. If you're trading that reaction, sure. If the breakout happens and you get a pullback, the market gives you a trigger to the upside, sure. Put a stop against that pullback and trade, trade the long side. But in normal price play, um, it's not something I would want to. I would want to really get too in, too comfortable doing. Stephen, does that make sense? I prefer always using session highs and session lows. Um, if the market conditions warrant it, there's a lot of volatility. We're seeing the market really press in the direction of a of in reaction to something, something like that. Yeah, you got to be quick, put it against the next swing high, and try to play this the stretch, but. On a day-to-day -day basis, typically I'd like to uh, typically I like to, to to use major key resistance, major support, session high, session low, something like that. He says yes, uh, thanks, always helpful. Right on, Stephen. Great to see you in the room, man. Stefan says I've been trying to add on to Jamie's plays based on scalp triggers. 
use caution, guys. Jamie, you know, I have a strategy that I've developed over 10 years. Jamie has a strategy he's developed over 10 years. I do, I, I don't want you guys to try to mix the two. Um, they're, they're based on the same exact technicals and the same, same exact views of the market, but the risk to reward is different. Um, the volume of the trades is different. Uh, the direction he'll look to play, you know, he's it's a swing trade, right? So he's looking to play the broader swings off of resistance support within structure. We can play a little bit more on the intraday. So even if a swing trade is on the long side, but it comes into resistance, the scalp guys, we can take a small short off that too. So we want to make sure we're not trying to, you know, try to mix the two, Stefan. I just don't want you to get, you know, the, the two standalone strategies, right? Each with their own merits, each with their own risk management. Um, so just keep that in mind. Certainly all the scalps fit within the confines of the swings and vice versa, but I don't want you closing out a swing trade to try to short it. If the broader target is still far out, that'll alter your risk to reward in the swing setups themselves. Does that make sense? He says, example, I see adding on the Euro yen short based on a scalp, but maybe not so much. So, um, again, I don't let me let me take a step back. For my purposes, guys, I don't really need to mix the two. Um, I don't want to necessarily say everyone has to do this, but I do have two accounts. One account we're using for longer term position trades, longer term swing trades. Um, I'm involved in a lot of the trades that we do on the swing side, obviously uh, on SB. Um, and then I have a separate account which I can use to take short term positions against my broader focus. So um, the scalp uh, account will be much more for taking positions against you know, or, or, or playing a position that I might have a longer term view on, right? I don't necessarily want to, um, you know, close out the, the swing trade, but for the intraday, it might be worth a stab to take the other side, right? So there's ways you can do it. There's ways you can do it, but I'd be, I'd be cautious about adjusting any of your swing positions or adjusting in your scalp positions to try to match the two. It's just not a good idea. Do you consider a swing play as conviction for a scalp, or do you totally separate the concepts? Um, we're always on the same page, guys. So we're always looking at the same type of setup. So obviously, um, yeah, I definitely take into consideration. Um, but I won't let that, you know, stop me necessarily from taking a scalp. Remember, guys, we're talking sh such t short time frames, right? Um, if I'm looking to scalp a 35 pip, uh, bounce against resistance, that has nothing to do with, you know, a broader swing trade that might be in, in focus, guys. Keep, keep, keep it in mind what your what the objective is of that strategy and this strategy, of, of the trade that you're taking. So I hope that offers some clarity. Um, why is 25% ETR important, says Terrence? Why not 20 or 30%? Thanks. Very simple, Terrence. I like to keep things as simple as possible, and everything needs to make sense from a logistical standpoint, from a technical standpoint. There's four major trading sessions throughout the day. You're looking at uh, Aussie or the Sydney markets, Europe, uh, Asia markets, Europe, and the U.S. Um, four major trading zones throughout the course of the day. I'm scalping intraday. I should be looking for about a quarter of what the daily range is doing. Literally, Terrence, it's that simple. Right. And again, nothing in, in trading is static. So if, uh, you know, you see a major stretch in, in, in price action and, and all of a sudden the ATR showing 60 pips on the euro dollar doesn't necessarily mean that's what the target will always be on those types of trades. Maybe we'll, we'll reduce it from 25 percent. Um, in the same respect, if the euro is coiling up right in the last couple of hours or days, we're making a really tight range. Well, if the breakout happens, I'm not going to want to scalp that 20 pip ATR that it's showing me, right? On that type of breakout, maybe 30 pips will be will suffice. Give a little bit more of a of a chunk. Um, so we want to be dynamic with it. But on average, a quarter of daily ATRs is literally uh, what we've been working with for a couple of years now. He says, "Gotcha, thanks." Right on, man. Good question. Okay, just going through some more of your questions here. Sterling, Oz, I got. Ster uh, Euro dollar, I got. Okay. All right, guys, feel free to throw out any, any uh, other questions or trade setups that you want to look at. I do want to just uh, quickly thumb through some of the charts that have been on my radar as well uh, on 
the commodity side of things. There's been a lot of talk about what's going on in crude. And I just wanted to show you this chart, guys, because yesterday we actually did push right off that median line that we were looking at here in the room. So again, uh, crude guys getting really slammed on the expectation. And this is something you want to take in mind as well. When you're watching, uh, if you're keeping your eye out on the headlines, if you're watching your t Twitter stream, um, you know, and you start to see these, 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 these clowns come on board and start, you know, wailing because you had a day or two off. You know, we've seen this happen in crude. Like, it's textbook, guys. It's absolutely textbook. Crude has one down day or maybe two. Everyone starts running to the hill. Oh, the rally's over. It's time to get back on the short side. And I don't want to keep harping on this, but all we got to do is follow the technicals. There was no breakdown yesterday. We didn't clear that uh, level on a closed basis specifically. In fact, we closed right at the high of the session, 61.28. Um, and you have a very clean opening range for the month. Use it. You know, use it. If you're, if I'd much rather, you know, be closing out longs at the highs than necessarily trying to press the short just because of where momentum is. When momentum gets above 60, right, and that holds a support, that's, you know, that's a very clear upside momentum signature, period, period. Um, you know, even the pullbacks in price find support at 60, not even 50. So that being said, uh, you are putting in divergence. I see it. Price action made a higher high into yesterday's close. The oscillator did not. But with divergence, doesn't tell you anything on time. Just tells you momentum is waning. So am I cautious of the long side of the trade? Yeah. Do we get some sort of correction probably near time or in the near term uh, within the course of this month? Probably. Um, do we have any indication that that's happening yet? No. The first indication would be a simple break of the monthly opening range. Then you'd look to play the correction. Uh, other than that, it's a simple uptrend, okay? And in fact, the resistance that we tagged back last week warranted some sort of uh, movement on near-term price action. But even now, I mean, we're not really at any key, key major inflection. I think you have room to the upside before uh, you run into anything major here. Basic trend line resistance off the June high, if you can see there in red. Still got a ways to go. Okay, uh, and and last but not least, uh, a quick update on gold. Here's the weekly chart looks like for gold, guys. Again, uh, just to put things in perspective, this is on uh, the intraday page as well. Uh, the daily chart for gold really highlighting a break that we're making here today, and that's basically above this zone, which was the upper median line parallel that we noted in yesterday's piece. So if you scroll down to the gold section, um, a topside break, remember we want to say a 50 break in momentum to give this thing some conviction. Watch today's close, but it looks like we're getting it. And again, initial targets was 12.05 or 12.04. That just hit. Watch this trend line, this entire zone. A little bit early on uh, on achieving it, but here we are. Okay. And remember how deep that median line stretches all the way back to that uh, 2013 peak. Nice pivots in price. Caught the highs for April, caught the close highs here again. We're heading into this zone right now. Objectively, what does this do, guys? Does anyone see it? Breaks the weekly, uh, excuse me, the monthly opening range high, which was 112. So all indications are really that, um, you know, based on the initial opening range breaks that we're seeing, that you could see the dollar really continue to take a tumble here. Here's the dollar index looks like this deep into the session. It's just holding still right at the lows. A quick look back at what we're looking at with the euro yen. Remember, we were tracking this one as we hold the uh, Tokyo highs, setting a nice range here. If we do break the upside, looks like we just did. Whoops, let me bring that back. 60 hold and momentum. If you get that 70 break, and the quarter of the ATR for Euro Yen is what right now? About 37 pips. Okay. 
watch that move watch that region watch that region uh mark saying euro uh, ej euro yen i get it one more look to practice divergence on five minutes would you consider this continuous divergence lasting five to six minutes on a candle um i would not trade euro yen right now unless there was something really compelling guys the daily atr is like 70 pips uh you're squeezing you know water from a rock on this yeah today was the biggest move of the week but here's what dollar yen looks like first well the daily chart looks cleaner to me than anything else but here's what the dollar yen looks like on the daily uh near term support is just close to where we are right now if this is the current operative slope that we're following you also have the lows from last week on the 7th which come in um right around 11905 20 pips lower from where we are right now momentum here on the daily I don't know what that is, Mark. Do you know what I mean, man? And it's all about the conviction of the position. That's as ugly as it gets. There's a reason we call dollar yen the abomination for so many years. Um, you know, obviously the major stretch on the BOJ and everything that happened uh, towards the latter part of last year was awesome. But so far this year, we're back into the abomination mode again. Um, it's funny because I was talking with Jamie about this yesterday and he, he was uh, – we were, we, he was saying something about the resistance level that we just came off of, which is playing out really nicely here at 120.18. Um, but I said the same thing to him. Like, this is just, you know, not my cup of tea. Uh, even from an opening range strategy for the month, uh, dollar yen is just not something that performs well with that type of play. In fact, if you look in the start of the year, there hasn't really been any opening ranges that have been decent. The January opening range did give you a play, but that retraced. There was essentially a wash on the opening range for February. Um, the opening range break that you saw late in the month for March didn't last a day. And April, complete wash. We never even broke the opening range. We're still holding the April opening range, in fact. So, you know, this is just not something I'm going to touch. Um, on the intraday, we did just make it through the weekly lows. But there's nothing here for me, uh, Mark. I do want to take your question, though, as far as the five-minute trigger. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So that range still holding for Euro-Yen here. Uh, five-minute trigger on. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much of a break. I mean, the only break here would have actually been the break of the uh, U.S. Open. Uh, I wouldn't even call that the U.S. Opening range, but the nice move below 11970 uh, and this and the 40 break in momentum would have been an interesting trigger with a stop against the highs. But even then, you're looking at a 19 pip stop. Would have been a decent play. The thing is, guys, for a trade like this, you can stare at it for the entire week and not get a move until something like today. But obviously the data print here, you probably wouldn't have gotten a decent entry on this to be, to be quite frank. Um, Mark says, I'm short dollar yen. Oh, can you look at, okay. One second, Raj. Uh, Mark saying I'm short dollar yen from one twenty twenty five. It tweeted at speed three days ago. That was an awesome entry right on, right on. He says, I wasn't talking about dollar yen. Are you talking to another Mark? Yeah, no, Mark, what were you talking about? I'm sorry. I think I might've misunderstood that. Give me some clarification on that last question. Raj saying, can you look at dollar CAD, please? Are you still tracking resistance at 121? Yeah, just above 121, it'd still be tracking resistance. Absolutely. Um, so let me take a zoom out here for dollar CAD. Okay, we're testing the invalidation zone or the key support zone that we've been watching since the start of the month, right? Here's your monthly low. Monthly low came in on the 6th. That came in at 119.39. Today's low stretched just below it. The low is 119.28. So we'll want to see whether this close actually materializes, but also keep in mind you're getting some divergence into these lows and you have a pending trigger break on the upside. So, um, 
how is the performance of Doncat today? Okay, it's about 0.38 percent. A little bit of a fraction based on what some of its ma other major counterparts are doing, specifically on the com block. So that also could be a tell here that you're seeing some exhaustion near term. Let's see what it looks like on the 30 minutes, the dollar CAD. So um, an objective opening range break for the early Monday, Tuesday stretch was materialized here yesterday. Uh, that gives you a downside bias. Actually, we probably should have been looking at this against the highs. Not bad. And here you are with a late week, midweek low. Uh, divergence into these lows here in price, making a new extreme on the low, the oscillator holding the lows. Yeah, interesting. Interesting that 119.43 level continues to hold pretty solid here. I would ex be expecting a near-term recovery. I mean, here's the here, here's the uh, the end of the game, Raj. Uh, you're you're testing a major key support. You're testing a longer-term multi-year median line. A break below this, you're really there's nothing there's nothing to even look at until you head into like 118, basically, right? Um, as far as your risk is concerned, I'd be waiting for the European close to see if this low is maintained. And if that happens, I'd be on the lookout for long triggers while above it. Okay. Um, again, it's fading the, the, the sheer dollar strength, but from the technical side, you're at a key support. The risk to reward would be there. But I do think you can get a little bit of a bounce here. Let's make sure there's no CAD data on tap. Okay, again, new house prices, manufacturing sales into Thursday, existing home sales. Okay, so you do get some data uh, for dollar CAD tomorrow, but nothing of merit. And PPI data out of the United States. Yeah. Can't do anything with the U.S. opening range because it's so big, right? So you're looking at a U.S. opening range high at 119.80 and a U.S. opening range low at 119.30, about 50 pips. A quarter of daily TR is only 30. So unless you get some com pretty compelling uh, lows here or a stretch where you can trade against, there's not much I can do on the long side here. A pullback, again, and a, and a, and a long trigger down here would sort of be the ideal play because your risk to reward is so tight at that point. Um, I'd be much more comfortable trying to play the long side. That being said, this is pretty critical in the daily. Pretty, pretty critical. I mean, it's a downtrend, guys. So even on the intraday level, it's it's always going to be better just to play the trend. Um, I just don't want to sell into support. I'd rather wait for this thing to break to the downside than than sell the rebound. Um, if it does, if it does continue lower here on dollar weakness, but this is going to be the major critical support you want to watch. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay, Roseman says, Michael, is there any bearish invalidation level for the dollar index? Yeah, you seem to be really focused on the dollar index. Huh? It's 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 the same thing we said yesterday. So we dropped the invalidation level from the weekly opening range high to the index to yesterday's session highs. Okay, um, and that's based on where the trend line is right here off the highs for the month. Okay, and also that median line. If we break back above that, I don't want to be holding shorts here anymore. Uh, that being said, look for yesterday's high to really be the max that you want to kind of hold this through as far as the dollar index is concerned. 
You see something happening in Euro Yen, five, nine five minute candles in a tight range. Sign of a top? Okay, first of all, I'm never going to make a assumption of a top or, or, or a high or a low in price uh, based on a five minute structure on anything. Um, this is just, you know, consolidation. You can get something like this for, for some time before it actually breaks. But it also offers some ranges to put a stop against. So something to keep in mind. Okay, we're over on time. So guys, listen, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of different trades. I know, sorry, today's webinar was a little bit messy. We had that technical glitch, so I was a little thrown off as we started. But look, um, to start off this session, we're going to be focused on the euro yen, and we're going to be focused on the Kiwi dollar. I think those are still going to be my favorite plays. I want to see if this turnaround is going to materialize. And it looks like it is. Did we miss it. Where's the stop against 74? Okay, it's a 35 pip stop. Okay, uh, looks like we might have just missed this one, guys, while we were looking at the at the Aussie, uh, at the Euro, Euro Yen. Look, see what the European uh, close looks like. That's another thing, guys. If we miss the initial trade on the open of U.S. trade, the next sort of window of opportunity to always check out is the European close. A lot of times the markets will drive up and jam up the markets right into the European close as uh, near-term, intraday guys start to close out some of the positions they've been pushing through the day. So a lot of times they'll give you a mini reset, if you will. The market will retrace some of it and give you another opportunity to jump in. So watch the European close. Uh, I'm mindful of uh, the Kiwi dollar getting too aggressive, trying to play any type of long exposure from here just based on where the daily is. And, uh, you know, we'll try to keep you updated on the SB squawk. Don't go anywhere and forget you have uh, Mr. Jamie Setley who will be on the mic at 1 p.m. for the midweek strategy webinar on SB as well. And I will be back tomorrow morning uh, at 8.30 as usual. Uh, Eileen says, where is the European close? 4 or 5 p.m. GMT or UK time? Uh, I don't know what it is UK time, Eileen. It's right around 11.30, 12 here in the United States, 12 noon. Um, and that's depending on what you're looking at. But the UK close, you know, is typically what I want to what I want to check out. So I um, hope that helps. Eileen says, great U.S. time. All right. Thanks a lot, sir. I appreciate all the comments, guys. Again, sorry about the uh, little bit of a mess here today with the webinar uh, getting started, but we'll be back to normal, uh, God willing, tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern. Best of luck trading, and I will see you then. Cheers.